Well, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you everyone for attending our webinar today. Uh, Insights to Action K-12 Trends to Know for the Year Ahead. Uh, really excited that we have one of our wonderful partners, Santa Rosa School District with us as well. So I will introduce them uh, shortly. Awesome. So just to give everyone an idea of what we're gonna talk about in the agenda today, we're gonna do introductions where I'll introduce myself as well as our partner district we have today. Uh, we're going to take a look at K-12 trends, really what we saw in 2022 throughout the course of a year in K-12, uh, but really what that means and implications for 2023 as we go throughout this year, what we can expect to see in 23 and further. And we're going to spend the majority of our time really just in discussion with Santa Rosa School District, talking to our partner, what they're doing for tutoring, how they're supporting their students. And then we'll leave a little bit of time at the end for a question and answer period. So, so for today's presenters, I'll introduce myself. My name is John Calvell. I'm the Vice President of Institutional Sales at Tutor.com, a service of the Princeton Review. Uh, I've been with the organization for over a decade now, I've spent over 15 years working in education technology, absolutely love supporting schools, district partners all over the country. So I'm really happy to be in this role and supporting as many partners as I can, uh, which makes it really exciting to have a partner here with us today. So Santa Rosa School District is here. Thrilled to have Kelly Short with us, Director of Instructional Technology and Professional Development. So Kelly, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your time. Thank today. you so much, John. I appreciate the opportunity to collaborate with you guys. Um, again, I'm Kelly Short from Santa Rosa County School District in Florida. I um, have been in this role for three years. I am a former student of Santa Rosa County School District. I taught fourth and fifth grade for 15 years, served as an assistant principal for two years at a primary school, and then a principal at a very rural K-5, K-6 school for seven years, and I'm excited about our new journey with tutor.com and the impact it's going to have on our students. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. Great. All right. So I just want to give a little bit of background on our organization and how we're kind of seeing the data and how that influences what we're going to see for 23. So for those who don't know, tutor.com is a service of the Princeton Review. So we are two trusted partners, one incredible team, equitable learning for all students. Our mission is to instill hope advance equity and catalyze achievement, ensure that every single student has access to one-to-one -one tutoring anytime, anywhere, in any subject, right? So that's what we're really looking to do with our partners across the country. So just a little bit of quick background about us, right? We are an educational partner to thousands of schools uh, in K-12, libraries, higher education, uh, even the Department of Defense. So we've been doing this for a long time, thousands of partners across the country. Uh, it's an honor to serve so many students, so many families, giving them that immediate help that they need with academic tutoring. Uh, we were able to do that because we have more than 250 academic subjects and test prep areas that our tutors can provide. And as of Sunday, I think we've actually exceeded 24 million unique individual one-to-one -one tutoring sessions since the year 2000, so something we are incredibly proud of. And we've been a service of the Princeton Review since 2014. So some of the things we're gonna look at today as we go through, taking a look at the snapshot of what happened in 2022, and again, how that's gonna influence 23 and beyond. So the data that we took a look at was in 2022, it just in our K-12 market that we support, we did nearly 11 million minutes of tutoring. Uh, and that happened over the duration of five over 543,000 unique individual tutoring sessions. All of that being done with a medium wait time of 30 seconds to make sure students get connected with a live subject specific tutor. So that's the data we're gonna take a look at to show what some of those trends we can expect to see in 2023 and beyond. So that first one is increased use of tutoring year over year, right? So that's something we're seeing um, you know, certainly COVID learning loss was not a short-term problem, right? That's going to have long-term implications, and that's why we're going to see need for increased tutoring in 23 and beyond. See a strong demand for math, English, and science. So we'll take an in-depth look at what those subjects are and specifically what topics we're seeing the most help in. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about a rise in school day usage, right? How that trend has changed from you know, five, 10 years ago where most students left school, they left campus, they found a center to get tutoring in. So now how there's a trend of incorporating that into the school day, into the classroom. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is that increased use of tutoring year over year. 
So in 2022, we delivered more than 2.6 times the amount of K-12 individual tutoring sessions than we did in 2021. And believe it or not, in 2021, we delivered more than two times what we did in 2020, right? So we're really seeing exponential growth in K-12 tutoring for students. When we're looking at what those subjects are, it's overwhelmingly for math, English, science, and then followed by social studies and foreign languages. And what's really interesting is this is what we're seeing across the country from our partners, from individual students, from families. But if you look at the lower right-hand portion of the screen, this is what's happening, Kelly, right in your district in Santa Rosa. And it's almost exactly mirrored to what we're seeing happening on a national trend, right? So just didn't just work out that way. Like that's just really what's happening everywhere as we support students and give them that support that they need. Overwhelmingly, students need that support in math. And then what we'll do is we will take a look at what those trends are in math. So if you look on the right side of the screen, everything you see in purple, last year we really saw um, similar support across some of our core math subjects, right? So algebra one, algebra two, geometry, elementary math, middle school math, they were very similar. Pre-calculus was a little bit lower. What we're seeing in 2022 is growth actually in all of those topics. The smallest amount of growth being 64% in geometry, which is still an enormous growth, but we're seeing enormous growth happening in elementary math, right? One of the reasons that we're seeing that is for a few reasons, that aligns with the findings from the nation's report card, right? Which reported the largest score declines in NAEP mathematics for grades four through eight in over 30 years. But that also speaks to any of those losses that students suffered from COVID, right? From being out of school, finding internet access, struggling to you know, engage in a classroom, you know, that's starting to catch up, right? So those students that were younger learners, like kindergarten, first grade, second grade, right? They're still behind as they move through their grades. And we really start to see a lot of testing start to take place in third and fourth grade, right? So we really expect to see that trend of elementary math continue, especially through 23, but through 24 and, and beyond as well. So a lot partnering with so many districts across the country, helping younger learners with their math. So some of the bigger trends that we're seeing this year. And additionally, as we talked about math, but we're also seeing lots of usage for English and language arts as well. And one of the components that we see that is through an essay review. So Tutor.com has an essay review service where students can drop off an open-ended essay that they're writing in any subject. And then in 12 hours or less, they will get live feedback from a tutor scored on a rubric. But what we're seeing is students are submitting essays about 2.5 days prior to that draft being due and about five days prior to that final version being due. And honestly, that's a really good thing, right? So that means just 18% of students use this drop-off writing early in the process. I mean, they're not sure how to get started. They're not really sure how they wanna construct a beginning, middle, and end. Overwhelmingly, most students are on track, but they just want some feedback, right? And that's really where we can help so many students, right? Making sure we're encouraging them to keep writing. We're helping build that self-confidence. We're helping giving them detailed feedback so they can do multiple revisions before that due date. And then about 26% of the students are nearly done and just want an extra set of eyes. Same thing, right? We're really helping them with that detailed information at the end, helping improve their confidence, making sure they're on track with the strong closing, right? Do they cite their resources correctly? So those are some of the trends we're seeing. So students are in a really good place with the essays they're submitting to us, right? We really just want to help them build that confidence, get those multiple reviews in before they turn it in for a final grade with their teachers. And then as we look at popular times of usage throughout the day, it's really important that we have this 24-7 support, right? It's a really big foundation of who we are as an organization and how we need to help students at that exact moment of need. Right, so one of the trends that we're seeing is after school help is still popular, right? So Tuesday through Thursday, 4 to 7 p.m. local time is still one of the most popular times. And that makes a lot of sense, right? That's when students, you know, it tends to be after dinner, students are working on their homework, um, they're studying for a quiz, they get stuck somewhere. It's a great way where we can support students at exact moment of need, right? So that's still a large trend that we're seeing. We're also seeing late night tutoring remains popular. So about 21% of sessions in K-12 are taking place between 10 p.m. and 3 p.m., right? So these are students that are working after school or they have sports or they're studying for a test, you know, trying to get everything in. It's a great way for us to help 
those students as they prepare. But one of the more unique trends that we're seeing, right, especially in 22, that's going to carry an increase through 23 and into 24 and beyond, um, is the increase in tutoring during the school day, right? So 29% of all the sessions that we're doing and all providing in K-12 are taking place between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday, right? So that means we're now being integrated into the school day, whether that's in an intervention block or we're working with students in centers, really creating um, differentiated instruction and supporting those classroom teachers to really help move those needles for students who are behind. So that is a big trend that we're seeing, and we expect that to continue and increase. And honestly, a great example of that, Kelly, is the work that you're doing in Santa Rosa, because the peak usage that you see is between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. on Mondays, right? So it's great to see that you have a lot of school day usage. Like, how is that working out? So I, I really love that because I, I think that's a testament to our teachers and um, their creativity and utilizing this tool in a different way than what it maybe maybe would have, how it would have been used. Um, our teachers are... Um, they work really hard and there's not enough time in the day and there's not enough of them to support all the needs of their students. And I think they're being very creative and in integrating the, the option for students to access that help when they're doing small group instruction, which is a best practice. But it also allows students the ability to get help right when they need it. Um, they're being very creative though in the integration of that into their math and their ELA blocks. Um, challenging students through scavenger hunts so they become acclimated to the platform so that they will use it more at home and advocate for their own learning. And I will say that as one of the most component critical components of the launch has been um, making sure that we have buy-in from our administrators and our teachers so that they realize the impact this could have not only on students, but helping them as well to, to do a better job or to take some things off their plate. You spoke to the writing piece, and I will be honest with you, that was that was what turned my head initially, the, the ability for students to get that feedback when at the secondary level, teachers have 120 students a day, it's very difficult for them to give that quality feedback with those writing assignments. Um, so it takes something off their plate. The students are getting quality instruction. It's a win-win, um, but I, I feel like our teachers are um, will be will continue to be creative in how they can use it during the school day. You know, it kind of sends that mis conception that tutoring we all think of after school and um, never have had a, a successful after school tutoring program because a lot of times the kids you need there are not the ones who can come or um, or or they don't see the value in it or they're already interventioned out by the end of the day so that real-time tutoring during the day when they're struggling not after the struggle has occurred is definitely a powerful piece so I'm excited to see that no, thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, you said two things that, you know, is always so important for us as we we work with our partners. One, so meeting those students where they are, where they need help, right? Because after school, we know it's sports, it's work, right? So we want to make sure we find those students that need that help and make sure they have access to it. And the other is really creating those dynamic partnerships. That's where there's so much power, right? So when we are an extension of what that teacher is doing in the class day, that's the best way to really provide students that support. So thank you for sharing that and I certainly agree. So it's fantastic. So that is a perfect way, I think, to segment into some of the work that we're doing together. Um, so if you don't mind, I'll just have you, you know, quickly just introduce yourself again for everybody and the work that you're doing. And then we'll get into some of those questions. All right, so again, Kelly Short. Um Santa Rosa County School District in the Panhandle of Florida. Um, we have approximately 30,000 students in our district, about 2,100 teachers. Um, our economically disadvantaged subgroup is about 42%. Students with disabilities, about 15%. Um, we were, this past school year, one of the 12 districts in Florida that um, earned an A for the school year. So uh, we're very proud of that, but we are content. We continue to challenge ourselves to improve in regards to what's happening with our students and um, moving the needle and closing those learning gaps as you spoke about with COVID. Um, we're a very high performing school district, but also we have great needs and great diversity within our district. And um, we have a very, um, focused district and school leadership teams who are kid-centered 
And tutor.com is one of the things I have been most excited about in this role and seeing the impact it could have and the answer to so many problems and barriers that we have not been able to address um, for all of our students. And that was part of your, your mission statement. And you know, our vision statement in Santa Rosa is to love, educate, and prepare our students for a successful future. But in our strategic plan, one of our critical initiatives is to provide equitable access for all students in regards to student engagement. So tutor.com has definitely um, helped us step in and be able to provide this service for all of our students. Oh, Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, and so what I'll do is I wanna show everyone what we're gonna talk about today. And so we've already talked a little bit about your district and, and your students, so thank you for sharing that. But what we're gonna to cover today with the rest of our time is why you decided to bring tutor.com into your district right, the impact the 24-7 tutoring has had on your students, how Tutor.com has supported your district with bilingual and ELL students, and finally, what insights on student performance, you know, have you gathered from Tutor.com data and reporting capabilities? So this is kind of where we'll spend the rest of our time. Just wanted everyone to see the questions that we're going to go through. Um, you already gave us an overview about Santa Rosa District. We could probably just jump to the second question. So you did that. So as we go through this, um, you know, why did you decide to bring Tutor.com into your district? So probably like many districts, when um, after coming off of COVID and knowing that we had tremendous learning gaps um, and trying to strategically come up with a plan to address those learning gaps, um, there was ESSER funding available coming from multiple directions. And so we initially purchased um, in 2000, I believe it was 2020, we purchased I think 523 hours of tutoring services with uh, the primary target was ELL. And honestly, it was kind of contained in our federal programs department. Um, so the, the reason for the purchase was we needed to stay under that threshold for the RFP process. But again, we were targeting those ELL students. So um, I was handed the information kind of shared it with our secondary administrators. We put a link in ClassLink and the timing of when we purchased, which was March, was not the best timing. Um, we were getting close to testing and spring break. And so we, we didn't really launch appropriately with our, with our schools and we really targeted our secondary in that ELL pop, population. So in that transition coming back from the summer break, it honestly, that's kind of where it stopped. And we we honestly weren't communicating with tutor.com, didn't know that we still had hours left. So to make a long story short, um, Sean reached out to me after he had stepped into his position and was analyzing the data at tutor.com and, and was very persistent and talking to me and wanting to know what our story was because he was concerned about, you know, what is our what is tutor.com not done? What are we not doing to help you? And I, I will say the customer service end of this journey with tutor.com has really been a wow factor. Um, there's always somebody there that will talk to us, work with us, help us, support us, whatever last minute uh, virtual meetings. And Sean spent a lot of time with me, helping me understand what our data looked like, what our usage looked like. And when we started talking about the impact it could have on students and, and the writing piece really caught my attention, um, then the journey began to try to pursue funding for all of our students. Uh, we, we had to work through the purchasing process, but we, we honestly had to find sustainable funding. And to me, the worst thing that could happen would be that we would launch this and roll this out and then not have the funding to sustain it and have to pull back after we've after we've taught students how to do it and they, they're advocating for their learning and this becoming such a valuable resource and then it's gone. And so that was concerning. So we, we were very careful and strategic in regards to what, what that needed to look like. And there was a lot of communication that went on behind the scenes for uh, from my end to help um, our district leaders understand what this could how powerful this could be and what it could do in regards to not just after school tutoring or blended tutoring, but what it could also do during the school day to support teachers, um, to support students, to, to support lost instruction time for kids who are absent, who can still get access to instruction if they know what the class is covered, um, and also supporting teachers in their growth. And so it, it really, uh, I believed in it. I drank the water, I believed in it, and 
everything about this has been, um, I learn something every day and the, the power and the flexibility and the built-in components, uh, I can tell you were just hands down that it was amazing. So we have, we were able to um, get funding through another ESSA grant that was focused on tutoring. Um, and we wrote into that a blended tutoring approach, which included during the school day. Now, prior to that, um, Sean had helped me set up three pilot schools so that we could track the usage, kind of gauge how many um, hours of tutoring we were using monthly with those, those three schools based on the number of students. So we'd have an idea of what we might need for the next few years. Um, and so we did a full-blown launch at an, uh, a 3-5 intermediate school, at a middle school, and then at a very diverse high school that's in our most at-risk feeder pattern. Um, and we we trained teachers, and I say we, I've been highly involved, and Sean and Noah have, and Regina also were very helpful in um, helping us do that, but getting the word out, getting administrators to buy in was the first, um, was first and foremost, but um, but honestly, the, the decision to do this was about our students. It's aligns to our strategic plan, meeting their needs, making sure all students have access, closing those learning gaps, um, and being able to help students grow and, you know, to prepare them for their future. I mean, it's, it, it has been, it's going to be a game changer for Santa Rosa County. No, thank you for sharing that, right? Especially because you've taken, you know, a unique journey, right? Like trying it out, figuring out if it works for this, this population. I mean, I think you alluded to it a little bit, but I think it'd be great to have you give a little more context, right? So uh, aside from Sean being wonderful, which he is, um, you know, what else was it about making sure that all students had that access for right? when you kind of made that second decision to really bring it in for your students. So, we, I mean, when we say we are educating all students and preparing all students for their future, that's exactly what we're doing. And every single student matters. And one of the surprising um, features that, that honestly I didn't think about, it's one of the takeaways from one of our pilot school principals was the fact that we had a lot of our accelerated students were accessing tutor.com and utilizing it for advanced courses and AP courses and test prep. Um, our take stock and children program, those mentees who have a scholarship waiting on them if they make it through the program, helping them do better on tests, the ACT and SAT to, to seek additional funding. There have just been so many spinoffs from this in regards to that need. Um, but, you know, in regards to the, it's been an easy sell with our teachers. Once they hear what it could do for them during the school day, then it, it's giving them options in regards to serving students and helping them. And I, I will say, you know, as we get into this, the more we get into this, the more creative we become in regards to, you know, loss of instruction time, which is something kids never get back if they're absent. Um, if they are in class, but they're not mentally present based on whatever dynamics, whatever, whatever they're facing, um, you know, mental, mental illness and mental, you know, health is such a huge topic these days. Kids are dealing with a tremendous amount of stress. So they are losing instruction time, whether they're present or absent. And teachers, it's almost impossible for them to be able to make up that instruction time. So the features within tutor.com, the, the synchronous, but also the asynchronous options that the students have to access those video tutorials. Uh, it really helps us address that piece that we have honestly never been able to address, even before COVID, you know, and, and those barriers with tutoring and transportation and, you know, um, motivating students to want you know, to come to tutoring. All of those have been huge challenges in regards to student learning performance. So I, I really feel like those are some features alone that as we continue to communicate and share and celebrate, you know, the success of our students and our teachers and our schools who are really utilizing this tool, I think it's going to have an exponential uh, impact and the growth is going to be amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. And certainly, you know, building that confidence for, for those students, especially as they struggle with those social emotional issues. I mean, it's it, it's really important. So thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Before we move on, we have a quick question coming in. Um, Kelly, could you share a little bit about um, the area, you know, specifically where Santa Rosa is located and, you know, if it's rural, urban, 
Okay, so Santa Rosa is look in the Panhandle of Florida. So uh, we're kind of nicknamed Floribama because the the most rural school in our district is about thirty minutes from Bruton, Alabama, um, and our most southern um, schools on the south end of our district are located on the sandy white beaches of near Pensacola, Navarre Beach. Um, so uh, kind of diverse, the, nor the rural part of our district, uh, very much an agricultural community, peanuts and cotton. Um, and again, on the south end, which is um, has exploded. And um, the largest population of our students are on that south end now. And so that's, that's a very, um, uh, it's definitely not big city stuff. I mean, it, very small town. Um, but again, you have that rural piece and you have that 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 beach area and that military population. Um, we have three bases close by and we have um, a high number of students who are uh, military families, part of military families. And one of the features in Tutor.com is that our military students have free access to Tutor.com and they have been, some of those students have been accessing it uh, prior to us even um, launching, you know, a couple of years ago. And that's been through counselors, guidance counselors, uh, military counseling and, and family um, engagement and so forth. So um, just that's just a little bit about us. We are, um, we are an average size district in the state of Florida, uh, but again, a high performing, but very challenged with a lot of dynamics, including our economically disadvantaged and our students with disabilities. That's a great question. Um, so next question that we want to just kind of go through, and we alluded to it a little bit, but what has the impact of the 24-7 one-to-one tutoring had on your students? One of the things I'm most excited about, um, I don't think maybe it's, uh, it's probably an indirect goal that we have, but creating an opportunity to reinforce students advocating for their own learning through choices, that is a huge piece in regards to student engagement, giving them choices as to how they learn, when they learn. Um, that, that speaks volumes to the research behind tutor.com and the synchronous, asynchronous components within that. Um, but, you know, we want our students to advocate for their learning. We want them to stay in the struggle. And one of the reasons why kids, they quit, they give up. And the, that quiet quitting we hear a lot about because they their um, that social awareness of I need help and and the pressure that puts on them or really not being able to identify what they need help with not feeling comfortable asking for that um, or you know getting at home and not remembering how to do something and what other options do you have and so I think that piece alone is going to be uh, powerful as we watch our graduation rate increase and I do feel like this is going to address that as well our graduation rate right now is um, right at 90 91 percent which is which is really good um, but it can be better and and so we really feel like that's a an important piece in regards to the impact it's having on our students that support of uh, supporting the loss of instruction time and really honing in on what that can do and how we can make up that instruction utilizing our tutors through tutor.com. Um, I had noted that, you know, we've had traditional tutoring barriers, the lack of student participation, couldn't rec we can't recruit teachers to tutor after school. They don't have the time, they don't have um, the, the, the emotional, emotional fatigue of their jobs is wearing them out. So even getting someone qualified to be able to provide that tutoring for our students, that has been a huge barrier and, um, and not being accessible for all students in real time. So all of those pieces are impacting students. The, the usage has gone up. Um, teachers are starting to see turnaround in student performance in regards to their, their assessments in class or their ability to know how to study for a math test which is always a challenge without them feeling like they have an assignment. Um, so teachers are getting creative in regards to how they are coaching students to help them in regards to using the tool. Um, again, some of the major selling points, the, the writing feature and 
that rigorous feedback that students can get in that writing process, which is powerful in their language development. That's going, that, I know that's going to be a game changer. And we have literacy coaches that are hands on with this and they are going into classrooms, they're modeling for their students in those classrooms and helping those teachers kind of get over that barrier. Of not, I'm not familiar with the platform. Um, creative possibilities during the school day are going to, again, give students the ability to ad advocate for their own learning. If you look at some of the comments that our students have left after those sessions, and there are pages and pages of comments within the reporting system, to me, that was a selling point as well in regards to the hook for administrators and the hook for teachers to give time to helping students develop that comfort level in accessing tutor.com. But when they make comments like, you know, the, the tutor was able to explain it way better than my classroom teacher. Uh, the tutor took time and was very patient with me, didn't make me feel dumb. Uh, things like that really stand out. And not that teachers intentionally do that, but kids feel that way without those interactions even happening. So that is a safe place for them to, to get that help that they need and, and to fail if they have to within that, that environment. I feel like based on the comments I've seen that the relational capacity and the emphasis that's put on those tutors with tutor.com, I feel like that's that's important and that's addressed with them because they are definitely skilled at connecting with students and um, helping them through processes, helping them think, not giving them answers, not just showing them how to do something, but guiding them through that, that thinking um, stage of solving problems, asking them questions to find out what they already know. It just, you can tell they take time to connect with those kids. And those are, to me, that's, that's impacting our students in regards to trust, like trusting, trusting adults and, and trusting that I can ask for help. And um, I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to get shot down and I'm not going to be criticized or I'm not going to be made fun of. There are so many different features here that really lend itself to supporting that culture and climate that we we truly want to create for our kids. Um, you know, the, the parent piece is powerful, especially in elementary and giving parents the tools to help their students. Um, they're probably less likely to be. Um, um, autonomous with with it initially, but the parent role is such an important piece, and it is making parents feel more successful, and and helping their children. That that can create conflict at home, and I know that I, as a mother of four, that is not easy to do, and um, and I couldn't always help my kids. And so that that math piece that you talked about in elementary and how that number has is growing, absolutely because the, even the primary math is challenging for parents because of the the vocabulary and the strategies to solve problems. So um, when you just take all of that and you look at that and see how that how that pours into how that's impacting students, it's building relationships as well, you know, with students and those tutors, students and parents, and parents and the school system and the teachers, because many times in those meetings, those parent conferences, those IEP meetings, you have very tough conversations. And a lot of times the teacher's getting blamed because the student is failing and there's a lot of finger pointing, but we have a, we have an answer now to help parents help their students. So it is, honestly holding them a little bit more accountable now when we honestly were struggling to do that knowing that they're limited in what they can do to help their students and and I love that piece as a parent I love it as a hopeful grandparent one day I, I would hope that my grandkids would have access to something like this and and I could be that parent that's helping them and and that relationship can only get better so there are so many we could sit and talk about it all day long but it the impact it's going to have on students it's more than just a, a test score it, it's about lifelong learning no thank you so much for for sharing that. I wrote down a couple of different things you said that were that were really powerful that are, that are certainly important to us as we work with you your families, your students. So that parent guardian role is, is so important from, you know, the webinars that we do, making sure parents understand it, how they can log on, how they can be that support for their students, how we can work with them directly makes a huge impact. Um, supporting teachers, right? That is a national, you know, problem. Certainly, Absolutely. Um, you know, being an extension of what's happening in the classroom, helping them after hours is incredibly important. Um, and, and I honestly, I just loved helping students advocate for their own learning. I think that's such a powerful statement. So uh, I love that you said that. It's really fantastic. 
So another question that we want to um, just kind of have you elaborate on a little bit, right, is how does CRLCOM support your district with bilingual and ELL students? So uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, we have a very low um, ELL percentage of students it, compared to the rest of Florida. The further south you go, that that is, um, it, it's eight, 70, 80 percent of some of their student populations. And, you know, we're, we're right at 4%. So when you, in thinking about that, we're, no, we're actually at, um, we're not even at 1%. So we have very few LL students and um, that's starting to grow and that's starting to become more of a challenge for our teachers. You know, in the, in the central and southern part of Florida, we have a lot of bilingual classrooms. Our cl the classroom teachers are, you know, th they speak fluent languages and so both languages and it and that is beneficial for those students on top of the resources and support they get but our teachers struggle with that in Santa Rosa so this is a tool that they have to help support those students to communicate with parents which has been a viable piece and that instruction that those students have access to is providing them language instruction not only in the students native language but also in English to help bridge that vocabulary and language gap and so it's it's just an additional support and add on to the services that those students already receive um, and that vocabulary piece I think is a powerful piece within that structure um, and just giving students and parents the opportunity and teachers the opportunity to help a student when they don't know the language and I feel like we're going to see that as our um, ELL support staff as they start utilizing this this strategy that using tutor.com and as they're using this in their IP meetings and we're putting it into IP goals and expectations and I feel like this is going to definitely um, support those students incoming students we have and, and so that we can maximize what we're doing to educate those students because those numbers are going to continue to grow in the panhandle. Thank you. Uh, I think we have one final question for you we wanted to go through. Um, so the last question is, what insights on student performance have you gathered from Tutor.com's data and reporting capabilities? So, I mean, I have, um, I haven't spent a lot of time in the, the reports, but when I was given access, it was so easy to, to get in and start looking at data. Um, no training, just going in and clicking buttons and starting to read those reports and um, started looking at student usage by schools, especially after we had launched our pilot schools and tracking that progress, um, but then breaking that down and looking at student usage. And when I did that, I, I, I was there were students who stood out because of the number of um, minutes or hours that they had spent in those sessions. And from that, I started having some conversations with Sean because it, you know, it, with anything we do, decisions we make in regards to fiscal, um, the use of fiscal funding in it within our district and, and what we choose to um, prioritize in regards to strategies, programs, and so forth, we should be doing that with the end in mind. How are we going to evaluate? How are we going to measure the impact that this is having on students? And is it worth the, are we getting the most bang for our buck? Is, our, is this a valuable um, investment? So in looking at that student data, one of the things we talked about was pulling those students into a group, a subgroup here after our, our state assessments have taken place and looking at learning games. So those students who have accessed tutor.com and that with the highest number of usage minutes and hours, uh, looking at their learning games and comparing that to their past learning gains in their educational journey, looking at that from grade level to grade level, from teacher to teacher, school to school, um, and utilizing that data to not, and I don't doubt that it's going to be evident, um, and using that data to drive the emphasis and, and the power that we have with this tool to actually impact that student performance piece. Um, I'm excited to see what that looks like. And, and I don't doubt that that's gonna be a huge part. Um, the, there are other reports within that, the um, early alert reports that you get immediately. Uh, it keeps, it takes another thing off the teacher and the administrator. You don't have to go looking for it there. Those alert warning emails are sent to you. And that for three, I think there are three different reasons why they send them. One is they have um, 
long sessions, extensive time with it, showing that they're struggling. I think working below grade level, uh, well below grade level is like a, a target, an alert. And I don't, I'm not sure what the third one is, but I so know yeah, that- the student um, doesn't have prerequisite knowledge. Okay. We would set okay. up an early alert. Or at the end of a session, the student doesn't have mastery of that concept. We work with them for a while. They're still struggling to understand. We want to set out an alert that way right. that instructor, that site coordinator, instantly can see that and can then address that with yeah. their student. They can and I love that you don't have, we don't have to go looking for that. It, it's right there. And that can do a couple of different things. It may be a student you already know is struggling, but surprisingly, there are students who are showing up in those alerts that the teacher didn't know they were struggling. And, and sometimes they're in those accelerated classes and those AP pass rates are, are critical to those school grades. So that there's valuable information that comes in that immediate response through that correspondence, helping the teachers and helping guidance counselors or whoever those people are who, who are receiving those emails be able to provide immediate timely intervention for students who are additional on top of what they're getting from the tutors. Um, the student feedback is another, honestly, reporting system within tutor.com that I love, absolutely love. We don't ask, uh, they, students are our most important stakeholders and we don't listen to them nearly enough. And this is their voice. They are telling us what is happening with tutor.com. They're telling us what their, their learning journey is looking like. And we really need to pay attention to that. It's really good for teachers to see what they're saying when, you know, when they say that um, the, the tutor from tutor.com has uh, explained it way better than my classroom teacher, or it didn't make me feel stupid. Those comments right there, that, that'll, that, that should shake you as an educator and, and challenge you, you know, to better serve students. So, um, so many different features within there. And I think as we uh, finish up the school year and we start gathering that data and looking at those individual students, student by student, looking and then going back and looking at our students who didn't make learning gains and, and kind of using that to kind of work backwards and in communication with parents in regards to um, what that could look like for summer remediation and, and additional blended programs that we may be providing. Um, that, I think the the data piece of it, you know, is not just about the numbers. You know, I think the student comments to me are are powerful, and parents parents are commenting. The elementary parents who are working with their kids are leaving leaving feedback, and that's powerful feedback from our stakeholders. Now, Kelly, thank you so much for for sharing that. I mean, I really do appreciate that. Um, I know we have a few moments left, so uh, I just wanted to see Mercedes if any other questions came in that either I can address or that. Kelly Yes. Uh, so one question, uh, and I think this would be great for Kelly. Could you share? Um, could you share some of the methods your teachers are using to incorporate tutoring into the school day? Some of the creative ideas. I will. So, um, in regards to getting students acclimated to using Tutor.com. Um, some of the teachers are actually pulling a student up to the laptop and they're the students logging in and the teachers kind of guiding the student through, but they have that projected on the screen so the students in the class can see what a tutoring session could look like. And they're kind of walking through that as, as a class. Um, that's one piece in regards to helping kids kind of start advocating for that, um, as well as the like a scavenger hunt. One of the teachers created a, a worksheet with a scavenger hunt and tutor.com, gave the instructions during one of their um, small group rotation blocks, the students, that was one of their activities that they were working with a partner. And, and that again was to help students get acclimated to accessing the platform, engaging with the tutor so that when teachers are absent and they have a substitute, then the teacher can design those lesson plans with tutor.com built into that structural day especially for those, especially for math, which is very difficult for um, teachers to leave a new concept to be taught for by a substitute and so forth, or reinforcement, reteaching and so forth. So within those stations and kind of like guided practice for students to kind of get them over that hump of what is it, what do I do with it? Uh, some have used it for extra, um, like extracurricular homework, um, like um, like 
extra credit points for teachers and I mean for students and parents at home to engage and become more acclimated to the program. Um, if if our, I have some teachers who are now starting because we're in the second semester of the year and the writing process is starting to become more challenging and the expectations are starting to heighten. Um, teachers are starting to work that into their classroom. It's just procedural in their classroom. Before you submit your final writing, submit to tutor.com, you get your feedback and you do your final version. I will, I will score your final edit. And even one of our, um, one of our schools was sharing that the, um, the teacher, the student submitted the rubric that the teacher uses and the tutor used the teacher's rubric, the classroom teacher's rubric to score the student's writing. So it aligned to how the students were being assessed in the classroom, which I thought, again, just lent itself to that, that partnership um, and, and serving the students. Um, you know, we're, we're really on the front end in regards to um, what can be done with it. And, you know, Noah has really helped in regards to offering to, you know, to zoom into a classroom and, and do like a, a demo with students if, if teachers are uncomfortable. Um, so I feel like those strategies and how they're gonna use it are going to continue to grow as teachers before, become more acclimated and, and students as well and parents. Um, trying to think if there was anything else that one of the principals uh, has like a, and then she was using like her ITV program in the morning. She would once a week would take a look at the usage reports and she would, do shout outs for students who were advocating for their learning and seeking help. And the minute she would do that the next day, the, the usage would just skyrocket because kids were, they're getting recognized for learning. And um, maybe, maybe would have to be manipulated a little bit in the secondary where they may not think that's compliments, but, but even that one-on-one -on -one conversation with a classroom teacher and a student, when a student is, using the tool and letting them know, I see how hard you're trying. I see you trying after school and I see how much time you're spending. Like those are powerful conversations in regards to that relational capacity and motivating kids and that student engagement. So uh, the possibilities are endless um, in regards to how creative teachers are going to be with this. Um, but, you know, I, we are going to try to create a a common um, like playground, so to speak, where teachers can share out best practices and strategies that where they can take that scavenger hunt and, you know, add a little bit to it and use it with their, their middle school students or their high school students. And um, so in, in those parent events, having parents come in for a parent engagement event and having the parents and the students, you know, engaging in um, a, something that involves tutor.com, whether that be a scavenger hunt or, you know, find this within tutor.com. I think just those, those, every little thing matters. And in regards to that engagement piece, that's what we're looking for. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. It's so unique and really great. Thank you, Kelly. There's another question. Uh, which high school in Santa Rosa County District is using tutor.com the most? That um, would be good. Oh, sorry, go ahead. And then uh, part two of that, that same question is, is there an accountability component to the program slash platform? All right, so Milton High School is the high school that we um, initially launched with in August. And um, if you look at the feeder pattern in Milton High School, there it's our most diverse high school, approximately 2,000 students. Um, one of the critical areas that they struggle with is the algebra pass rate. And so you know, knowing that and looking at district data and knowing that feeder pattern is one of our struggling, we 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 honed in on Milton High School and the principal happens to be my husband. So I had a little leverage there um, and knew how that how hard the teachers were working and the dynamics of those gaps that students were entering the high school with that were challenging in regards to getting them across that finish line. Um, and a, a lot of data has been analyzed in regards to strategies to to support this, but tutor.com is also one of those strategies, you know, to help with that student piece and the, the loss of instruction time for kids who are absent sports, you know, kids who are engaging in sports, which we want them engaging in after school activities. We want them plugged into their school community. Um, we don't want them going home and sitting in front of a video game. And so we're, we're trying really hard to engage them, but those students struggle as well. So that's been um, a powerful piece. Now, and then what was the second question? 
Mercedes, you had said something about. Yes. So the second question was, um, is there an accountability component to okay. the program? So um, we are not micromanaging um, tutor.com, but what we are doing is we are, and again, we're in the front stages of launching with the rest of our district. So that that happened second semester in January upon returning back from Christmas break where we knew we had the funding and here we go, we're ready to roll. So that started with administrators and then teachers and schools are, they're taking ownership of how they're launching, when they're launching, if they're focusing on one department, one, one grade level, they have autonomy to make those decisions. What we will do at the end of the school year, the, the district staff will sit down and look at the, the test scores and student performance scores and learning gains and, and you know, those areas that have grown and those areas that are, that are of great need. And, and then we'll utilize what we have with tutor.com and those schools who have utilized it. What does their data look like in comparison to those schools who have similar um, population of students? And, and what does that look like in comparing those and communicating that data to, to drive the strategies that align with our strategic plan, which is a huge, um, to, for, I feel like that is, that's a, that's a piece that I probably um, haven't emphasized enough that how this truly meets one of our critical initiatives that our administrators were part of creating. So um, are we, do we hold them accountable if they're not doing it? No, but just like I said, with the, those schools who um, at this point in February have very low usage, from my end, I start reaching out to them. Tell me what I can do to help you. Do would you like me to set up a, a training for your teachers? Would you, you know, do you want us to have some of my staff come in and do some modeling in classrooms? Um, different approaches to help. The, they've got they've got a lot on their plates right now, and we want to support our, our teachers and our administrators and our students. So. Um, you know, in regards to accountability and knowing we're spending this funding and, and sustainable and we have fought hard for this, I feel like that accountability piece is going to happen organically as we continue to emphasize and keep it on the forefront and prioritizing the strategies that, that we're using that truly impact every single kid. Thank you, Kelly. And then this question is for John uh, at a high level. Um, what is the cost and is it based on number of licenses? Sure. So we actually leave it up to our partners to decide what's best. So we offer an hourly range. So wants to buy a block of hours for their students where they can purchase hours up front and then deplete those hours as they're used. Whether one student uses 40 minutes, another student uses eight hours, we deplete those hours. Or we also offer an unl unlimited license for a full year. So a student can use the program as much as they can throughout the course of a year. So we offer models for both. Awesome. Thank you, John. Uh, that wraps up the questions, but there is one statement that I'd like to share from Michael Thorpe. Uh, it says, no question, but as Kelly's boss, I'm so grateful she brought <laughs> tutorial.com to our district. It's a game changer. All participants should reach out to her if they are looking for a successful implementation into a school or a district. So thank you, Mr. Thorpe. <laughs> Kelly, thank you so much. You're such You're a very welcome. Partner. I appreciate you being here. Um, it's just fantastic to work with you and your students. So thank well, you I feel much. like you guys are a part of our staff and, and the tutors are part of our staff. And y'all probably feel like I work for y'all now, but I <laughs> truly believe in tutor.com and, and I feel like it's the most kid centered thing we've done in a long time. And awesome. that's heartwarming. I love it. Thank you. And then, oh, sorry, there is one other statement. Oh, thank you, Isabel. It says, thank you so much for the information. It sounds really great. Okay. Uh, and then John, I'll just leave it to you to just wrap up. Sure. So again, thank you everyone for attending uh, our webinar today. Uh, and if you haven't already, feel free to take a look at our next webinar and sign up for that. It's going to be on February 28th. Uh, at the same time as we have today. What's next in test preparation, preparing students for the new digital SAT, right? So making sure families, students, districts are prepared and understand how that test will be changing. 
That's going to be our presenter, Rob Frannick, Editor-in-Chief at the Princeton Review. So that will certainly be a wonderful, dynamic presentation. So feel free to join that. We'd love to have you there. But thank you so much. And there, there, just, there was just one question about getting in touch. Um, we're sharing John's information here on the screen. Um, we will follow up with you. Great. Yep. Feel free to reach out to me with any additional questions uh, that I can answer. Happy to help any way I can. Thank you very much.